This is James Allison. Welcome to the May 13th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting for Pen One. It looks like we are recording this meeting. And I will go ahead and do the roll call now. Claudio Capizano. I see Claudio. Um, we have our newest board member here, I believe, PJ Christopher. Great, thank you, PJ. Annalisa Kohler. Here. Jeff Noodleman. Hey, present. And this is James Allison, present. We have a full quorum. Um, if it's okay, um, and it's not totally putting PJ on the spot, um, PJ, do you want to quickly introduce yourself to the board? Absolutely, I'd be proud to. Uh, PJ Christopher, Patrick Joseph Christopher, I go by PJ. I'm a Port of Portland business development manager. I've been with the port for, I guess, 13 years now. Um, I've worked in land use planning, property management, and now I'm in uh, business development. On um, I played a pretty big role, or at least participated in the Chateau Reynolds Industrial Park development. So I'm familiar with SDIC, quite, uh, quite familiar with SDIC. Not as familiar with the MCDD portion as I don't do as much aviation type development, but definitely familiar with that. And I'm excited to be on board, quite literally. And just, I'm looking forward to moving ahead and seeing how this whole thing works. So thanks for having me and um, appreciate the opportunity to introduce myself. Thank you. That's a great introduction. We look forward to working with you. Moving on in the agenda to item B, do we have any public testimony? Nothing that I know. I don't see anyone. Okay, then we'll move on to item C, contract approvals. We're adding that, sir, as a standing item on the agenda for, for when we do have them. We don't actually have any right now. Did you have comments, Kelly? No, um, just exactly that. We've decided to put this um, to make sure that we are in compliance with our local contract review board rules. Um, and so as contracts come up that either um, have not been budgeted or that have been budgeted, but that are over the threshold, um, which I believe is 50,000 for single district contracts, then we would bring those items to you. And it may be a contract and it may be a task order. So um, either of those things require approval from this board. And so we just wanted to um, get it up on your agenda so that it's kind of a standing item. Kelly, could I ask you a quick question just as a trying to learn as much as I can? Example of a contract or a task order is like a capital and a improvement, maintenance, or just a few examples of what something like that might be would be helpful for me. Sure. These would be um, potentially a goods or services contract that um, Pen One is a party to. So um, if a new project is starting and we need um, construction design or um, <laughs> contracting sort of work or even um, some of the more professional services like facilitation, things like that. Um, and then in some instances, we have price agreements in place already. Um, but because those don't obligate either party until a task order is signed, then we consider each task order to be a contract under the price agreement. And so we would bring those to you that would look less like a contract because the terms um, are not in the task order itself. They're just referenced from the price agreement but then the task order would have a very specific, um, you know, for a, a single project or something like that, a specific task or um, set of services. Understood, thanks for the clarification. Sure, thanks for the question. Claudio, do you have a question? Well, and just, yeah, it's a clarification for me. And so as a general matter, the things that we'll see as Pen1 are Pen1 specific, uh, the other things that through the Joint Contracting Authority will go through the JCA, right? That's correct. We see those yeah. As well? yeah, okay. oh, um, yeah. So any contract that's directly with the joint contracting authority, they would be um, the ones to see that. And so the kinds of contracts that Pen One would see would be where either Pen One alone is the party or is jointly a party with other districts. A, a good example of that would be could be the um, drainage master plan, where there is a a much bigger project. It's very specific to Pen One. Since maybe we have a little bit of time today, I don't know if that's true, but um, I'll take a risk. Um, 
could someone give an elevator speech to PJ about the Joint Contracting Authority? <laughs> um, I will let Ke Kelly start. <laughs> okay. Um, and because then you she was here when it was established. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we put together the Joint Contracting Authority. It's an it's an ORS 190 entity. So um, the four districts uh, signed an IGA to create this fifth overlay entity. Um, the primary purpose was to facilitate a lot of the accreditation um, and certification work that is being done by Levy Ready Columbia to make sure that our levies um, stay certified and accredited um, through FEMA and uh, what we've found is that it's just kind of, it's a double-edged sword. In some ways it makes contracting a lot easier because we have one party to contract with um, as opposed mm -hmm. to four, um, which kind of gives us more flexibility in terms of looking at our uh, drainage and levy system as a system. Um, but in other ways, it kind of, it, it sometimes just is another government and another set of paperwork that we have to do. So um, we've tried to use it efficiently, but um, yeah, it's, for example, it's, it's the party that we've contracted with Business Oregon to receive a $500,000 grant for work um, that benefits the new urban district. So it, yeah, it offers us some kind of flexibility like that. Yeah, I believe Emily briefly explained that to me on my onboarding in the packet that she gave me, which I haven't dug fully into. I believe Emily has that in there. So that was, that, that's generally how I understood it. And I, I, I suspect when I really dig into that, which I'll do, it'll, it'll be explained there too. So thank you for that because it's a, it is a different, so. Great, thank you. Okay, let's move on to the meat of the budget today. Item D, the budget discussion. Oh can boy. I, can I start a little bit here? Casey, can I? Please, yeah, please, I, please. I, I, was just so, I was just so eager. You know? I know, and it's such an exciting topic. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, first of all, um, give you a little bit of a background um, on how we approached the budget this year. Uh, last year was my first year, and I'd only been on board uh, a total of six months, so it was an interesting um effort when we were also setting up a new district and having how many sets of books. This year, I took a much more, um, I worked with staff and I worked on developing a more, a more specific strategy um, and provide some, some goals and um, parameters. And the goal was to really present the board a budget that reflects the critical priorities that staff can realistically execute. I think there have been times when we have had a lot of things in the budget and we, weren't, we did not have enough resources to make that happen. So that was really a major effort. And recognizing COVID has impacted all of our um, activities. Um, we, I wanted them also to take into consideration that there's more and any increase of staff needs for the urban flood safety water quality district. So we're trying to balance those resources and to look at the projects that are really going to help us all get to the same place with a new district by 2025. And so how to prioritize that and to re realistically budget that um, many times we have come forward with, a, you know, asking for a lot of money, only getting a third of the way through and staff did an excellent job this year of going, okay, this is really going to take us three years to do it. Let's allocate the budget accordingly and go forward. My goal really was those budget requests are a commitment to the board and the landowners of what we are, what we need and how we can, and what we can execute. So um, as far as priorities were concerned, first and foremost was critical flood safety and system integrity work first foremost across the board. We wanted to get people ready for preparing for the pre-engineering and design for the PMLS and some of that has to do with working also on easements 
across the board to a support that effort, but also to ensure that we are intact all the way across the agency, that the easements we need, if we don't have them, how to go about filling that gap. And our multi-district projects, I, we heard quite, we heard from Pen one last year, you kind of felt like you were, there, there was kind of a, a catch 22. And I really wanted our multi-district projects to be focused on moving forward in preparation of consolidation. So Casey will go into that in a little more detail, but I just wanted to um, um, talk about that. I also wanna make this statement. We are so fortunate to have the city of Portland be such a good partner for Pen One in supporting our operations through special appropriations and BES for stepping forward and helping with um, capital projects related to drainage. If we didn't have them, we would not be able to function. Second of all, um, I want to thank Kelly Sherbo, who deserves a huge shout out for the success of bringing back property into the system for assessments, which is coming out to about 35,000, I believe, give or take. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking, yeah, <laughs> looking to see if Casey was doing this too. Um, and then I just want, as Casey steps into this, I just really want to thank Casey and staff for, pro for proposing a realistic, doable um, budget that is able to be executed. So those are my words, and I just wanted to get that out before Casey started in. All right. I guess it's me now. You're on. I am going to be simultaneously on my other screen here, looking at both the budget spreadsheet and the narrative, the Word document. Um, I've found this year through trying to do budget meetings in Zoom that it's, I don't find it all that productive to try and put something on the screen because sometimes I'm talking about something else and it, it's just weird and you don't get to see the people. So uh, I'm not gonna put stuff on the screen. I'm gonna walk through the, the Word document. If you've got questions, please jump in and, and ask them when they're timely. Um, and with that, I will get going. Um, most of you know, and all of you will soon know, that Pen One's finances are pretty shaky and have been for quite some time. Uh, there's a small revenue base and we've got compression issues that have constrained our ability to raise the revenue that's needed to keep up and move along and do the work that needs to get done. And the city of Portland, as Peggy mentioned, has jumped up big time in the last few years to help us out. And she's not exaggerating when she said that without their help, um, we wouldn't be doing business. We'd be broke, been broke a couple of years ago. So where are we? Um, I'm gonna jump into what I call the summary there on the first page and just go over the numbers basically, get a sense of the size of the budget which is just under a million dollars with total resources and requirements, budgeting for $837,000 in revenue and $848,000 in spending for an $11,000 deficit. Uh, we're planning, expecting to begin the year with 113,000 in the beginning balance and to end the year, knocking off that 11,000 at 102. We do have for um, PJ and Annalisa perhaps uh, a loan agreement outstanding. And it has a requirement that we maintain at least $60,000 at year end in unrestricted reserves, which has been a struggle on occasion. Um, but we're looking to be able to end next year with 102,000 of which 6,000 is reserved um, dedicated, restricted. So there is uh, plenty of room above that minimum threshold. 
which is not to say that it's a healthy reserve, but it meets the absolute minimum. So starting the year with $113,000, uh, you started this year with 158, which is a little more than budgeted. The deficit this year is about $45,000. And so that produces a beginning balance. You start in the year with, with 113,000. Revenue of $837,000 includes 296,000 in landowner assessments and $537,000 from the city of Portland. Um, as Peggy mentioned, BES has stepped up and agreed to pay all of our capital outlay costs in M1. So we're able to do some of the things that we just haven't been able to do with the decrepit pump station and, and other issues. Um, and the city general fund kicked in $123,000 this current year. We asked them for 168 for next year. And um, that got included in the mayor's proposed budget and was blessed by the city budget office. So we're hoping that that ends up in the final budget. We're expecting it to. Assessment revenue is up quite a bit from last year. I'm projecting up $50,000. Um, I'm looking at 40,000. It might not be quite that much from restoration of the, the properties that are back in now, thanks to Kelly. And we're also in this proposed budget proposing a 10% rate increase. It has been several years since a rate increase, like five or six, I think, at all. Um, <clears throat> it won't raise much money, only about $10,000 because of the compression issues, but that $10,000 is needed and you haven't had an increase in all that time. So it's really not a big stretch. And so we're putting it in the proposed budget and the board can of course kick it around. Um, what else we got? Minor other things. Um, BES's funding includes $28,500 for ongoing maintenance costs, which is levy drainage system maintenance, paying for electricity and SCADA, all stormwater related stuff, because that's what BES can pay for. They don't pay any levy expenses. Casey, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Uh, could somebody please give me a quick overview of the, the assessment from the, just a quick overview of the restored properties. Sorry if it's thorny, but what's, what's the deal with that? Colin, I'm glad you're here. You're our expert on this. You and Kelly both. Um, I can take a quick crack at it and then Kelly can uh, fill in, but um, back in 2015-2016, uh, we did a boundary survey um, and we discovered that uh, the Pen 1, the district had updated in 1933, um, had updated the boundary from the original uh, reclamation plan going back to 1917. <clears throat> there was a bunch of properties on the northern section that had taken dredge fill and elevated themselves, um, but that actually predated the building of the levees uh, in the late 1930s and 1940s. Um, and so uh, there was a discrepancy there between the benefits received and then uh, the actual uh, petition and order in the reclamation plan of uh, the, the properties that were within the district. Um, and so the process that Kelly led was to get those properties back in. So I'll kick it over to her for um, a quick overview of uh, the process that she led. And so we noticed in about uh, 1998, when MCDD took over the management of Pen 1, that those properties began to be assessed again. And so um, once we discovered this discrepancy, we immediately ceased assessing those properties. Um, and it's, and we're, what we're talking about is, um, along Marine Drive, I, I, I couldn't tell you how the length of it, but um, from about graphic packaging, um, and then I can't remember what the cross street is there, uh, but basically Expo Center um, is the area that we're talking about. So um, we immediately ceased assessments. We outreached to those landowners and let them know what was going on. Several of them opted to um, go ahead and continue paying a fee to Pen One in lieu of their assessment um, to support the, the flood work that we're doing and to acknowledge the services that they were receiving. Um, and then we 
had the landowners, um, we sent out information packets through which they signed petitions to the court to um, be annexed back into Pen 1. And we had a sufficient number of acres represented that we were able to go th forward with the process. Um, and so that triggered a, a, a legal process where we had to um, have three commissioners be appointed by the court that came and learned all about our system. And we helped them draft a report that was filed with the court kind of acknowledging the services that are received and that the benefits um, outweigh the cost of paying into the district. Um, and that process was just finalized in March. And then we had to file um, our new maps and everything with Department of Revenue so that they would accept our new assessments in July. And um, yeah, so I, I think there was a general recognition that this, the, ever since the levees were built there, the official um, that were built by the Corps, that these properties had been being benefited by the services of the district. And they just wanted to recognize that and make sure that um, Pen 1 could remain solvent until the awesome. urban district Thank takes over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, moving on to expenditures. $848,000, uh, 441 in M&S and about $340,000 in capital spending. Uh, materials and services is increasing 14%. Um, the main causes are two. There is, um, we're budgeting a 30% increase in the cost of, to pen one of getting MCDD staff support. We budgeted it at 108,000 this year, which was probably a little low, probably. Um, and we're projecting that that total is gonna be $145,000 this year. So we're trying to bring that budget back into reality. Um, the other thing is um, a new program to support the levy system. It's $29,000, which is a good chunk for Pen one uh, to do PMLS work is the favored acronym these days. Um, and those two things account for 61,000 of this $63,000 M&S increase. So the rest of the budget is more or less flat. Operations, which is the, manage, the running of the pump station, maintenance of ditches and culverts, et cetera, running the SCADA system and electricity to run the pumps um, is, a total of $83,000, 829. Uh, there's an increase there of 8,900. Most of that in system maintenance um, with pump station maintenance up $6,000 to inspect discharge pipes and $8,000 to repaint the discharge lines. Uh, there's a small increase, $1,000 for flood control inspections. Electricity and SCADA are pretty much the same as always. Um, Projects and planning is the big catch-all category. That's $100,000, which is up 20% from last year um, because of those two PMLS projects that I'll talk about a little bit. Most of the individual items in here, of which there are 13 line items, nine of those are multi-district projects that have been budgeted before. Their total budget of $34,000 is about the same as last year, up $1,000. There's some that are continued this coming year, some that had been there before and are back again. Um, so the total for these projects themselves alone is, 30, is down $13,000 from last year uh, with increases in district levels of service and for uh, development standards and a small increase for integrated habitat. Two items specific to Pen One Development Review. That is um, always a tough one for us to estimate. Bill does the best he can with that, but you never know how much development's gonna come. You never know how much time it's gonna take our staff and which of those are gonna be level twos and level threes and whatever. So he called around, talked to people and came up with um, an increased number for development review next year and some increase in uh, the revenue that comes with that. And there's a $30,000 project for tow drain remediation, which is being paid for by the city of Portland as part of the $168,000 that we asked for. Uh, two PMLS projects, 
These are for pre-construction and engineering and design phase of, of it uh, for, what the hell do we call it? PMLS project support is a broad ranging sort of thing. Uh, to do identification coordination with partners to manage hazardous toxic and radioactive waste and to help with preparation and planning for real estate acquisitions, uh, primarily easements. The second is an easement gap analysis to identify easements and ensure they're sufficient for doing the work as required by the core. So that's that piece of projects and planning. Sorry to be dry and tedious, but it's kind of the way that category is sometimes. Uh, contracts and agreements, we talked about MCDD a little. Pen one contributes to the Levy Ready Columbia Consortium, I call it. Um, we, your share is $55,000 next year, unchanged from the year before. Professional services are down a little bit. Audit and accounting is up. We knocked $10,000 off of the legal services budget to reflect actual spending the last couple of years. Government relations is up primarily because we corrected an error in under budgeting that last year and the rest of the items are pretty small and mostly ongoing work. Well, that's not true. Diversity, equity and inclusion is new this year in Pen 1. Um, that's Pen 1 share at I think 13% of the total budgeted amount. Administrative expenses are about hey, the Steve, same. Can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Yes. Um, uh, go ahead. Talk about sorry. governmental affairs. Like, so uh, we've we've had some great uh, assistance, both in Salem and on the federal level, over the years. So has that uh, basically kept at the same level, or what? What's the plan? Uh, what it, to correspond been, with the budget numbers? It's been unchanged for. I don't know, the last two, three, four years. I'm always shocked. I expected an annual increase, but it hasn't shown up. So don't, what was it? The, Joyce Cohen told me once, learn to take yes for an answer. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, just thanks. Yeah, there is a little bump in the budget next year, a few hundred dollars. I don't have the number right on the tip of my tongue um, for some help with, the Columbia River Treaty negotiations, if they get to the point where we need to uh, have more of a presence there. Okay, contracts and agreements we talked about. I, there is an error in the text there. For some reason, I said the MCD admin was an increase of 8,000. It's really an increase of 32,000. Capital outlay, likewise, there's an error. I don't know why I said there's 310,000 in that budget, it's 340. There are three projects, all paid by um, BES for continuing the work of OSHA fall protection, um, putting in structures at ditches to make it safe and accessible for the crew to get to. There's $170,000 for the drainage master plan. It was to be started last year, but COVID hit and things got backed up and slowed down. So we didn't get much done on it, but that's expected to be done next year. And then um, a project of two or three years duration is doing structural re rehab of the pump station, the PIR pump station. This is just to get it in shape to continue running for the five, six, eight, however many years it's going to be until the thing can be replaced because it's in terrible shape. And that will continue certainly into next year. There is one outstanding debt, if I recall correctly, that's $67,000 for payment on a commercial loan that was used to, that is replacing a line of credit originally taken out to pay the preliminary engineering costs for uh, the levy rehabilitation and uh, certification work. That debt will go two more years. And then, you get down to the bottom line, ending up at $102,000. The distinctions between undesignated and operating are rather arbitrary. Um, the operating reserve is an attempt to keep um, two months operating cash on hand, two months of non-capital um, expenditures on hand. 
just as a cash flow and, and prudent measure. The undesignated is what's left after that. There is $6,000 for restoration projects from Diversified Marine that paid the district 14,000 in 2010 for certain kinds of projects. We spent eight of it and we're not planning to spend any of it next year. So where does that lead us? I wanna talk about PMLS for a minute. We have, I've talked some about a couple of projects that are paying staff and some contractors to do some work on this phase of the project, getting ready to go into pre-engineering construction and design or PED as it's lovingly known. Um, but there are also the costs for said PED and construction costs that have shown up in our five-year capital improvement plan, neither of which Pen one has the wherewithal to pay. Um, so there's going to need to be, and it's, it's a stretch for MCDD and Pen one as well. Pen 2 I'm sorry. Sandy is doing fine, but Sandy has less of a call. Since much of the work is going to be done in Pen one and Pen 2 uh, more of the costs are being allocated toward Pen one or Pen 2 We still, as Claudio pointed out when we had our budget liaison meeting with him, there's still issues to be resolved about how those costs are going to be allocated among the four districts and whether other folks, other jurisdictions, our LRC partners will be able to help us uh, kick in some money to get this work done. That's what I've got. Um, any questions, comments, discussion, on and on. I have a question um, that relates to the last thing that you chatted about and Claudio, I know you are our liaison to the budget stuff. Can you um, give me a timeline and kind of the structure of how the decision is gonna be made about what districts pay how much for the um, PMLS? I think it would be helpful for me to understand that. Um, personally, I don't know what the process is going to be. I think it's from what I know, which is limited. Um, that's something that's going to need to be worked out over the course of the next year. I will um, turn to Colin and Peggy and um, others who probably have more information on that and can speak to it more effectively than I can. Peggy, you're on mute. Peggy, you're muted. There you go. I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think Colin would be best to talk about kind of timelines and currently how we have approached those costs, um, since he is most familiar with the Corps of Engineers. I can add as we go. So, Colin. Sure. Th thanks, Peggy. Um, so, I guess yeah, there's two different pieces. The uh, main thing is for the kind of bigger bite of the apple, but not the full construction, the full apple, I guess. Um, those allocations have not been uh, decided yet. And so we have engaged uh, Julie Damon from Kearns and West, um, and we have her under contract. And one of the things that we're working with her is on is a process for this allocation. So um, we want to begin having that the allocation for the pre-construction engineering design. Um, there's a little bit of um, openness, I guess, to that timeline where we need to actually have that allocation methodology in place. We have other work uh, that needs to be done in preparation for uh, PED, the pre-construction engineering design. Um, and then there's the question mark about when PED will actually begin. Um, it is uh, really at the, the whim of uh, the federal government in many ways. Um, and we're looking at different ways that we can get started even in smaller increments earlier. Um, but ultimately uh, it's up to the Water Resources Development Act or potentially um, inclusion in a Army Corps of Engineers uh, approved budget. Um, so that is a little bit open. Uh, the plan is to begin having um, discussions with the individual boards uh, and Julie or Jamie Damon uh, actually would be facilitate, facilitating those conversations. Um, staff will bring information about uh, the actual benefits and costs um, associated with each one of the districts. 
Um, and then the other conversation that needs to happen is a connection between the urban flood safety water quality district and the existing boards, uh, because there is a, a transition conversation about, um, you know, basically ensuring that the work that you with your individual boards are doing now and paying into um, smoothly moves into uh, the revenue analysis and forecasting for the new district so that the actual big capital construction uh, pieces are, are uh, approachable, I guess. So this summer, uh, begin having those individual board discussions. Ideally, uh, by the end of this calendar year, uh, the boards would have an allocation methodology um, agreed upon across the four boards. There's a lot of things that need to be discussed during those meetings, though. There's, you know, especially if you're using loans or grants versus uh, what is being put into your, um, you know, into your assessments will ultimately change what those allocation preferences might be. Um, and we have as staff all of the information about um, what the actual estimated costs are and the benefits um, largely done by the cost um, multiplied by uh, sort of the shared, you know, because it works as a system, uh, the shared uh, sort of risk profile across those different districts, but it will be board decisions on uh, some of the more political or policy um, considerations. Uh, and then just really quick on uh, across the four districts for this fiscal year, sort of getting ready for PED, uh, that about $30,000 in the Pen 1 budget. It's 87,000 across the four districts. Uh, it's split into three pieces. Uh, one is uh, really focused on real estate or real estate and if you just think of things related to the direct footprint of uh, the anticipated projects, um, that is pretty much uh, assigned directly for what the footprint is. Um, and then for the, uh, there's two other pieces um, for the uh, financial advising, which is hopefully trying to find a uh, financial advisor um, to help secure either a private or a public loan. Um, and that shows up in Pen One's budget for less than $900. Um, but that is using um, the core's analysis on the economic benefits received in each district. And then um, we're using table one, which is something that uh, your board might be familiar with that we often share levy related expenses that are shared across four districts. Um, Pen one's portion of that, um, which I'd point it off the top of my head, somewhere around 13 or yeah, 17%, um, that, that's being applied to the rest of the cost. Based um, on can, levy mile. Correct, yeah, table one levy mile, exactly. And one other thing I'd like to add is we recognize the PED is going to take, I know you, we've gone over this a number of times, but it's always good to remind ourselves, you know, we anticipate the PED is going to take three years and the anticipation of even getting funding right away is limited. But what we're all trying to do is make sure that the work that's done on the pre-engineering and design is completed in advance of that permanent district, the urban district setting up, because then that sets them up for being able to go out and get a bond measure to cover the overall construction. So that's, we're looking at that in probably 26, the new board being permanent in May of 25, May or June, and going out with a, um, bond in 26. So, and, but it, you know, I know it's hard. There's uncertainty associated with it. The numbers we have are based on what the core has given us. And we all know that moves and wiggles quite a bit. Um, but we're trying to, to approach this in a realistic fashion over a four to five year period so that everybody is, is prepared as best they can be financially to address these issues. James. I think Claudio was first, Claudio. Claudio, sorry, you were on the left. No the worries, left. James question's probably better than mine anyway. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll jump in. Um, so 
just as a general matter, you know, we can anticipate the costs, you know, pre, pre-urban are gonna be ramping up. I don't think we're the only district that will be challenged by those. Um, so it sounds like we're looking at, um, at financing options that might then pass the, 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 the loan liability to the urban when it gets created, right? So is that more like more or less sort of, you know, trying to uh, push as many of those costs out, uh, you know, the, the actual cash flow uh, like issues out to when the urban is created as possible? Is that generally what we're, what we're looking at? I, I do not believe it and Colin can correct me. I don't think we can push out all of it because they, we have an obligation of matching by 35%. Granted, some of that match can be in in-kind services, which from my perspective for the boards is, it's, it's coming either directly out of a cash contribution or out of a staff contribution somewhere in between still costs money. Um, and, you know, I don't want to dodge the question, but until we get in the, in the course um, work plan, which we anticipate to have final understanding of where we sit in October when we get the chief's report, we're looking at really starting to to make some tough decisions in 23, 24, and 25. Is that helpful, Claudio, or did I not answer your question? Yeah, no, I think I think that's helpful. I guess, um, you know, it I, it sounds like though, you know, before that time frame, we are gonna be ramping up costs. We are gonna, you know, um, the actual, you know, the, 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 the current revenues of the, you know, of all the districts are gonna be pretty hard pressed. So I know that we're looking at financing options. I'm just wondering sort of just generally, does that sort of speak to the, the, the strategy to try and sort of, um, you know, sort of use financing to tide us over as a general matter? I mean, obviously there's some, uh, you know, some costs that we're gonna cover uh, sort of on a pay-as-you-go you know, approach, but I'm just wondering, you know, and, and if so, like what's the, you know, what's the general approach to that, you know, uh, approach to that financing and how are we thinking about doing that? And I think um, I'm gonna answer very directly that the other districts could potentially carry their pet costs. And this is just where, how we currently allocated it by big increases in, in their assessments. Um, where we have a huge gap is Pen One, and how do we how do we address it in Pen One? And um, that's how we're gonna. That's what with the financing options, et cetera, that we want to focus on um, this coming year is where it's going to be a critical. It's going to be a critical discussion about what's the best and when do you need it, because right. we also know that Ted. It takes three years and Colin and Mark done a good job of estimating, okay, year one will be this, year two, it'll be this, year three, it'll be this. So, mm -hmm. you know, what does that structure look like and how do we, how do we meet that gap? And uh, on the other side of that too, this is after my time because my, the, <laughs> it's a ticking, um, <laughs> but, um, as an aside, it's important for you to know um, the LRC team and the um, Colin is starting to take a look at where, what all do we need over the next five years um, in Pen One and specifically where some things can be, we may have discussions with the city about where they can come in with in-kind services. And he's been working, he and, um, and Evan have been working on that as well. So, you know, it's kind of putting all those pieces together so that, um, so, so there's clarity over the next three years, but that's gonna be what we'll focus on this year. 
And I'm sure that was as clear as mud, wasn't it, Claudia? No, no, that was super helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I think that uh, understanding sort of that uh, that Pen One might be, you know, more challenged uh, to pay for some of the ped costs. I think that that you know, and that we might be looking for for some form of financing or other support for for those costs. Just want it, to, it it does make make the urgency around dialing in the allocation approach that much more urgent from our perspective, um, because, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we're not using uh, sort of more, uh, you know, more traditional levy mile based allocation, you know, those uh, yeah. like, yeah. you know, that we're, we're talking more about benefits. We're talking more about where, where we're going to land eventually, uh, because I anticipate those costs stacking up pretty darn quick and having a, a real issue that we need to solve for in the relatively near term, at least for our our district. And I think Colin answered it very well in stating, you know, it is a system. So where are the benefits coming? Okay, my dollar may, I may only owe $5 because it's, you know, I got to put, you know, monkey wrench here, but I'm benefiting from all the work down the line. I should be getting, I should be more responsible and not, oh, five dollars, maybe it's more, but those are going to be some tough discussions, as you can imagine. Totally agree. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. James, now it's your turn. Super. Thanks, everyone. And I, I'll um, channel Phil Ralston for a moment. And when he talked about Pen One, he used to say, um, something like, you know, you need to at times be a little bit provincial or parochial and that when we talk about the costs in Pen 1 um, and the risks are there in Pen 1 in terms of um, levy, um, the insufficiency of the levy and the, but the consequence of failure is, is low by comparison to Pen 2 and MCDD. So that's a, he always underscored that um, our, our costs and our likelihood are high, our, um, consequences of failure being open space and the industrial properties being a little higher up are a little lower. And I think that's just important to, to remember that. I don't think that ultimately the discussion with the new district and the discussion or the outcome in terms of apportioning um, liabilities and, and costs will play out in a provincial way. I think as I've heard from most city uh, commissioners over the last few years, I know the council's changed, um, that we need to treat the system as a whole and that the system can't fail. So I feel pretty good about that. I'd like to pivot just for a second to really just um, to pivot away from the um, uh, PMLS and just ask the staff to check some assumptions um, that I have. First of all, thank you. I think this is good news. I always want to remind people where we were, we were at several years ago, which was we couldn't pay that annual debt. We were in deferment on that. Um, great job on the assessments. Um, it's exciting that in a couple of years we will pay off that debt service, it looks like. Um, and the imbalance was a little bit higher than anticipated. That's good news. Um, and so if we can stay the course in these, in the two, what I, I would call a two-pronged approach as far as the city of Portland is concerned, uh, general, general fund for um, operations and um, BES for these capital improvements. And this is where I would like some thumbs up or thumbs down or thumbs sideways from staff is what we're really accomplishing this year or what I will call next year. And if we can do this the following year, we are, improving the capital, um, our capital assets. We are paying, um, we're, we're increasing our uh, payment to MCDD for the work you do, which was probably minimally, we were, we were funding you folks at the minimal level. And so from an operations and capital investment perspective, we are in much better shape than we were a couple of years ago. And if we can continue that trend and it will require vigilance over the next two to three years, um, we're, we have a reason to cautiously, um, thank the staff and, and celebrate. Is that more or less a, a story, a, a, a realistic narrative and not a fairy tale? <laughs> I, 
from my perspective, and I can only bring in two years of budget, is I think that is fair. I think that is a fair analogy. Um, others, I can't. All I can all I can respond to is the two years that I've been here. So. Oh, Casey, you're on mute. Okay. okay. Um, there is one issue that you brought to mind, James, that I should have mentioned and I didn't, and that's about a debt we're not paying. Um, several years ago in like 2013, uh, Pen One took out, well, there's a, a loan from the Infrastructure Finance Authority that is administered by the city of Portland and Pen One's payment, annual payment was to be $17,046. We didn't have that money at all, period, two years ago. And we notified the city, um, perhaps not as formally as we should have, but we did let the city know we weren't gonna be able to pay it. Um, I haven't included that in the budget for next year. You know, if you think that you can afford to spend $17,000 and probably keep that continuing until this is paid off for, I, I think three or four or five years. I don't remember. It's been so long since I looked at it. Um, you could do that. The, the awkward point and the thing that really convinced me to argue for just saying we can't pay it is we could pay it if the city of Portland would give us the money to pay it. So they'd yeah, be giving yeah. us money to give back to them. Now it might keep the books a little cleaner because they wouldn't have an outstanding obligation on the books. But I don't think that you can afford to pay this and continue to pay it until it's paid off unless somebody else gives you the money specifically for that because it's just going to be part of your deficit. And and can I add one thing because I am the one at fault here is um, uh, two years ago I had that conversation with Tom Reinhardt made it very clear we couldn't pay it. Um, he and I had a verbal conversation I was remiss in not getting it in writing. I will, um, my obligation to all of you is to give him a nudge and ask him to put it in writing so it is in our books. And I was remiss in that. I talk to people all the time about closing that loop and I didn't do it, so. It, it being what? The fact that we didn't have to pay the 17 or the fact yeah. that the, at the end of the day, the ultimate solution will be, as Casey describes, that when everything's said and done, that's the manner in which this thing will be uh, satisfied. That they would just ignore it, recognize we would not, Pen One, the city mm -hmm. would recognize Pen One will not make any further debt contrib contribution to the city of Portland for that debt, that they would forgive the debt. The city of Portland would forgive them. And or, and this is Hong. Yeah. Uh, and to that point, I mean, to help with keeping the books clean, we would appreciate efforts to try to get, a, a, you know, from the city written forgiveness, whether it's termination of the, the loan agreement or some, some sort of a, a formal forgiveness agreement in place. Or even postponement if they want to try and get it out of the urban district a couple sure. five years. Yeah. Some, some sort of an amendment to that loan agreement to uh, not require repayment because we are currently in breach of that, of the written agreement um, in terms of the repayment obligation. So I'm happy to, to talk to Eric Schaffner at the city of Portland if you are all ready for, for us to have that uh, new, uh, drafting. I would recommend that that's done after a conversation right. with Tom. To close that loop. I'll, I'll just note that uh, you know I appreciate this discussion because I think that it, you know as I've mentioned a couple of times over the last couple of months I think it's it is really important and I, and I do appreciate uh, the uh, uh, Peggy your comments and and comments in general about the about the support that the city's provided um, not so much that the city has provided it but that you know we have been putting together all of these different. You know, approaches to taking care of what we need to take care of as a district uh, and staff has done an amazing job of doing that whether it's you know finding additional revenue and I want to note like 
you know, with for a budget that's in the nine hundred thousand dollar range, uh, we only make about three hundred thousand dollars in in uh, in assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kelly, the the uh, getting an additional thirty thousand dollars in assessments that's a ten percent increase. So I just want to kind of put that in in the sense of scale. But that also means that the vast majority of our budget is being uh, is being supported by uh, by partners. Um, and that's that's a that's a great thing, and we're taking care of what we need to be taking care of as a district. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you know as, as that that sort of um, that forgiveness is something that we're also noting as as being part of that support when we when we're when we're talking about that. You know, I, I don't want to belabor this, and um, but I am also thinking about the optics and. Uh, you know, in the environment we all live in, uh, with government, um, the, the term for, forgiveness is not a friendly one as far as the taxpayers are concerned. So, I mean, I think if we treat it in reality, I mean, since I've been here, we've been going to the city, county, metro, et cetera, state with our handout. And you're right, Claudio, we've had incredible partners and participation and collaborative results. But that said, you know, we have been knocking on the city's door you know, with some success, but we have presented them packages that, you know, we, oh yeah, 100% we're behind you, we're behind you, but the funds never come. And Casey's aware of all this. So what I, and we don't, again, we don't need to resolve this right now because Piggy is gonna have her talk, but I would not object since we have, you know, it's, it's not making up a fairy tale. We have been looking to the city to support what we do long before any of this happened. And, you know, if they can come to the point of finally realizing, yes, you know, Pen One provides an incredible service for the entire city. And to that end, we are going to supplement whatever payments we make to you they pay us and then we in turn pay off the debt. I mean, I just think from a transparent and from a optic standpoint, it is what it is. They, they agree separate and apart from this particular debt to give us the money that it has for years said that you know, we're entitled to and we just use those funds to pay off this obligation. I've got city people on this call, you know, heck of a lot more than, than plain old business guys. But I mean, as a, as a taxpayer and as a business person, I just think, you know, looking at alternatives as to, you know, the term forgiveness might be a better way to go. I, I might add to what Jeff's saying as a suggestion, uh, not a not a not a formal request or motion, but as a suggestion. Thank you, Jeff. For, um, I think that's wise. Um, you know, there's the message, and then there's the timing of the message. Um, our message to the city in the last year or two has been great. The timing, which is meant follow up, has been really good. That's why we're in a good position. What I would recommend is I would recommend or suggest, I should say, let's potentially wait until our next maybe formal discussion with the city about budget for the following fiscal year. So we'll talk about operations, we'll talk about capital, we'll talk about the outstanding liability and maybe formalize it at, at that time and do so in a way that's really politically acceptable to, to both parties, I think would be wise. Um, additionally, one benefit of waiting um, is you know we're going to lose um, you know in terms of Casey and um, Peggy we're going to lose quite a bit of institutional knowledge over the next year and I'm really thankful that we have Nick and his capabilities Nick Hogan and with Jim Meadow coming on board we're, we'll have that powerful team but there is there's a lot of history related to Pen One finances that go back to when the city was managing it and decisions that were made for the city to manage it decisions that were made for MCDD to manage it. And we want to be really careful about, we just want to be careful. Uh, all of this can be done um, well and to everyone's advantage, but I, I suggest we, we pause until we're ready to have a comprehensive discussion about 
budget and with with our partner. Claudio. Yeah, uh, James, I think I think that's actually a great idea, and I'm happy to put on uh, my hat of uh, former uh, former city budget office staffer to provide a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, advice to staff on how you might want to want to skin that uh, cat because I I think there's actually a pretty straightforward solution to uh, turning that what is currently a forgiveness uh, into just a round trip through our budget. Um, so I, I think it's, I think it's a pretty simple solution, basically moving, yeah, having them move the, re, the, the budget from OMF that pays the debt to, um, to the special appropriation that they give to us. Then we pay the debt with the special appropriation. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, it may not happen this year just because, you know, we wouldn't, it, it, you know, um, just to give, get the education done can cause enough waves to create problems. Um, so you want to do that education uh, at a time when people don't have a lot of budget issues on their plate trying to trying to make sure that they're they're not losing track of things. So I, I, I think that's really wise, James, um, that we might want to might want to wait on it. But I do think there's a pretty straightforward solution. And I will put that in my notes for Mr. Jim as an understanding. I mean, these are the sort of things that helps him to understand how all these pieces fit, so. Um, great conversation, discussions. Um, anything else? Um, with, um, just as far as process, um, we, this, the board is scheduled to have another budget meeting on the 10th of June, which is what, four weeks from now, at which uh, we'll come back with changes, any direction you give us, and we haven't gotten any anything there. And uh, we're going to update our year in projections. So we'll bring those in and then comb through and see if there are any last minute changes or correcting errors, which seem to happen to me with more frequency these days. Um, and uh, after that, we take a look at it. If there's any changes you want to make from what we bring you, we'll make those in time to get to the 29th of June when the format meeting happens and all the districts adopt their budgets. Anything Thanks. else for me? All right, I'm good. I know Bill wants to talk about the CIP a little bit. Bill? Uh, I really do. Uh, I'm looking <laughs> at the time and it's, uh, I'll say good afternoon. It's just after 12 o'clock. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk about your five year CIP and a little um, glimpse into the following five years, so out to 10 years. Let me, I didn't have an opportunity to send you information ahead of time. We were making some adjustments uh, late and didn't include it in your packet. Um, but uh, Emily, I don't have access to screen sharing. Um, so um, a lot of the information I'm going to be able to, um, to share with you um, is uh, similar to uh, what um, Casey already has uh, provided. So, but there'll be a little more information um, beyond that. Uh, let me see if I can blow this up a little bigger. And we'll be able to provide this information to you afterwards as well. Uh, so you have a PDF copy. Uh, can you all see uh, a full screen of the of the CIP? It's like showing your PowerPoint version. So it's a little bit smaller than, oh, okay. you know what I mean? It's like the president yeah, presenter's yeah. version. Let's see if I can change that. All right, how about that? Is that a little better? That looks great. Okay, great. So um, as you heard from Casey, uh, this next year in FY21-22, or as it's stated here, FY2022, 
Um, there are three um, items uh, that uh, the staff will be working on your behalf to um, to move forward. Uh, we'll be finishing the drainage master plan. Um, we have uh, we'll be finishing um, both of the um, fall protection sites uh, in uh, in Pen One on on the PIR property, uh, and we'll be able to continue working to design um, the measures needed to uh, reinforce the existing structure of the PIR pump station. Um, and uh, for those who haven't seen it yet, uh, we'll get out of our COVID restrictions. I'm happy to do a, a brief tour for those who haven't seen a couple of these sites yet. So you get some, uh, get some eyes on these locations. But what I wanted to comment on is, um, uh, is what's coming up beyond FY22. Of course, we've talked about um, the PMLS projects and so I'll skip over that information um, and focus on the rest of the uh, what's in the construction projects. Uh, the fall protection work will continue for one more site. Uh, we'll be uh, engaging the Port of Portland about uh, doing uh, work on their property near the Vanport wetlands. Um, you also see um, on the looks like the third line down uh, with the PIR pump station um, replacements um, called the uh, structural upgrade is there basically to make sure it's still standing uh, while we can actually design and construct a replacement for us. Um, uh, it's right now it's scheduled for FY to start in F the design to start in 2025. Um, that could get pushed out a year or two at most. Um, depending on uh, when the funding is available from the new urban district. Um, but uh, I'm not expecting the structural um, rehabilitation work to provide much um, support beyond about 10 years or so. So and it takes good four, four plus years to get a pump station designed and actually built. Um, so it's going to take a bit to get to that point. Um, the Vanport pump station, um, actually, uh, thanks to the Port of Portland, um, we've been able to um, replaced the pump and the motor just recently, um, but um, operation staff is actually pretty concerned about the structure uh, of the pump station. So we're going to be circling back with the ports uh, about the timing of their uh, of helping us do that work. I know they have their own uh, capital funding challenges themselves, and um, but if we're able to, I'd like to be able to start um, a process possibly to replace that pump station. Um, before FY 2027 or the years six through 10. Um, the portable generator connections is really um, associated with the PIR pump station uh, replacement. So as that project um, adjusts the schedule, so will the portable generator connections. Um, the, uh, the, you can see the FEMA uh, accreditation project. This is the levy certification project that's um, along I-5 and Marine Drive uh, inter exchange, uh, interchange there um, and um, a different, and if we have specific questions about that, several of you know about that project, but um, that's linked to the uh, LRC's um, uh, work to, um, to, with their partnership to try to uh, make those improvements. It's not part of the PMLS project suite of projects. So it's something separate that we need to address in order to um, receive a re reaccreditation from FEMA. Last thing I'll note uh, is a term you probably have seen in recent memory uh, for those who've been around for a couple of years. Uh, that's the SCADA system upgrades. Um, recall that uh, we were just able to finish up some upgrades recently. And, uh, but those focus on the communication systems. Um, we were using cellular technology um, when I first got here and uh, it worked great except when it rained, uh, which is a problem for us because that's when we're supposed to really jump into action. Um, and so we uh, shifted gears uh, and ended up um, putting in a radio uh, frequency system, uh, which is a fairly common technology used in many utilities, uh, both public and private. Um, and we were, thanks to the city of Portland, we were able to uh, make those upgrades at PIR pump station just recently. This set of upgrades deals with the hardware um, that's currently in the PIR pump station. And that's um, 
um, the program logic control units, the PLC units, um, the actual units uh, still functions, uh, but it's no longer serviceable. Um, so if something goes wrong, um, we can't replace it with the same kind. Uh, we have to replace it with something different. So, so this is not uh, a, um, uh, an item on the funding um, portfolio that uh, we've had a conversation with the city of Portland with about potential capital funding. So depending on those conversations that, uh, um, that uh, James and Claudia were just referencing, there's a possibility that uh, we might be able to, to add this into, the, into that discussion. And if not, uh, we'll have to figure out how to uh, make those this adjustments um, uh, uh, with the funds that we do have. So um, this is, you can see the numbers are dominated by the PMLS projects. Um, here, but um, that's something that uh, could have its own funding track. So. Any questions about this um, initial stab at your CIP? The intent is that um, we'll come, we'll bring back a, another version of this as needed next time you meet in June um, and have a full package um, for you to approve uh, at your. Uh, at the format meeting uh, at the end of June. Yes, sir, Claudio. Question, uh, sort of funded unfunded portions of this right now, obviously 21 and 22 are both funded, right? Uh, what does it look like in the out years? Uh, so 23 is funded for the structural upgrade projects. Um, and none of the other items on the listed here um, has specific funding identified. Well, we expect that BES will, will step up and cover the, the fall protection expenses and probably the SCADA system upgrades. They will not pay <clears throat> for that LRC FEMA accreditation project because um, that's outside of stormwater management, which they do flood management and levy maintenance, which they don't. Yeah, uh, so I appreciate that the addition, Casey. Just uh, one adjustment there. The fall protection projects will be finished from the city's point of view, at least in FY 2022. So 23 and 24 is really on the port property. And so that's oh, OK. Sorry. My bad. Does that answer your question, Claudia? Anything else? Uh, Bill, this is James. I have a, just a quick comment. Um, it looks like we have some pump state. Uh, nice job as always. Um, it looks like we have some pump station related um, expenses in 23, 25, and 26. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not sure um, how um, the MCD team will approach the BES team about those investments. But just a couple of um, just one uh, quick comment. We have a, a newer overall finance manager, Jonas Berry, um, has left. We have the same capital program manager and Steve Hansen. We have a new chief engineer, Paul Suto. And Paul, as you know, has been in the PIR or been next to at least the PIR pump station. No, he's been he, inside. I brought him inside. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, and obviously has a quite a um, working understanding of pump station um, issues. If it's, um, if it fits with MCDD's approach to have a conversation with these newer personnel around the, the five year look ahead as it relates to these big, big ticket items of pump stations that are outside the, um, the PMLS projects, I'd be happy to, to try to pull something to, together at the right time. And that would be really helpful. I appreciate that, that option, James. Any other questions for Bill? Great. 
Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, okay, looking, are we done with the budget discussion completely? Is, are there any other items for the budget? I think I'll just say thank you to the staff uh, you know, for, for everything, you know, in terms of putting this together, really working hard to, to make this budget work, make Pen One work. Um, so um, really, really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Thank you. Agreed. And actually, I do have one quick uh, question or comment. I always say quick, it's never quick, but um, the um, drainage master plan, when would be a good time to update the board on, on the, the status and the benefits of that, just to kind of um, give us some understanding of, of where we're headed and, and describe the benefits to the board? I, um, I, I, let me work with uh, Emily and, and Jim uh, at all, um, and let's, uh, with the possibility of circling back in this summer, um, to get that done. I know we're, there's some paperwork that's being done now to, to make sure, to kind of shuffle the shells a little bit to make sure that uh, we have the right funding to, um, to support that project. And it's, uh, it's gonna happen. Um, so we haven't, uh, the consultant hasn't started yet. So um, yeah, I think summer is, uh, is a, a realistic timeline. Great, thank you, Bill. Okay, let's move on to item E, new business. Eddie? Yes, um, the timing is closing in, um, but I did want to give you an update on um, the status of the Urban Flood Safety Water Quality District. And really, um, I it goes back a little bit to the ultimate timing of some of the other aspects of the city a little later. First, I just want to let you know that the urban district approved their budget for next year. And um, Casey submitted it to the TSCC. So it is sitting there. We got it to them before the 15th. So we're quite pleased with ourselves. Casey deserves a lot of kudos. Um, and then there is the hearing for the budget certification by TSCC is scheduled for June 3rd, where the boards will answer the questions that um, they come up with and with a plan to adopt their budget on June 21st. Talking about timing, one thing is this budget is based, this new district's budget is based on um, a loan by the city of $6 million over the next five years to the new urban district with an with an, a maximum draw of 1.2 million per year and um, <clears throat> with a repayment scheduled um, already outlined. The IGA was approved by city council. It is going to the urban district on Monday for approval, um, but that was, again, a lot of kudos go out to getting that accomplished so that that entity can be operational and really be ready to take on the, the big challenges when the permanent board has stood up. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know, as you probably notified you all before is Jim Mida starts on June 1. I have a commitment to be an overlap till June 15th. Um, and then I am pick, packing up my horses and moving to New Mexico. <laughs> so, um, but I did want to let you, let you know, I my goal is a lot of the things that are brought up here, my goal really for Jim is to help him understand all of the plates that we're spinning and those plates have knives on them and switchblades and scalpels and a few um, chainsaws. But we managed to get through it and to the other side and um, the staff is, it's an incredible staff so, and I don't, and Jim's a smart man, he's going to figure it out. But I just, I am here for a couple of weeks to, to help support that. So. 
Great, thank you, Peggy. Um, really appreciate your commitment to onboarding and having that overlap at uh, a couple weeks uh, can mean months of uh, of better productivity for a new new leader. Yeah, so thank you so much. it's just not fair. There's a, there's just too many, as I said, too many plates spinning. So, <laughs> well, is there are there any other items for new business today? I was going to add, um, last week you should have gotten an email with a link to the survey regarding the mission vision values uh, work. And I'm gonna, I have an email ready for you. I'll send it right now. If you haven't done that yet, um, I uh, would wish for you to do so. It's really important that we have that perspective of the current district boards, just so you all know how this place operates. And so I think your perspective is really valuable. So I just wanted to plug that. It's closing at the end of the day tomorrow. So if you have a few minutes to um, put some information in there, that would be really helpful. And, and thank you, Emily, because I did forget, they are finalizing and working on their mission, vision, values. They will be, it's anticipated they will adopt those in July, in their July meeting. And that to me provides the foundation for all the other work that's to come with a revenue um, development model the equity um, lens and the environmental. So it's kind of feed that foundation and provide a broader look. So, um, and Evan, des Evan deserves a lot of credit for spearheading that, so. Excellent, thank you. If there's no more uh, new business, we will adjourn ahead of schedule. Uh, great job again to the staff for bringing a lot of detail and getting through it quickly. Um, thank you to all the staff and um, Jeff, Annalisa, Claudio, and welcome PJ. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, we are the, the, the new board now, um, the new band as we've said before, and uh, appreciate the, uh, the um, attention and energy today. And we will be here to carry this, uh, uh, carry this Pen One board through to the new district. So, um, Stay strong, stay tuned, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank